With the release of Lightfall, I figured I'd go back and play the older DLCs to give my personal review. Before we dive into the story, I wanted to give you a background into my journey playing Destiny. It all started back in July 17th, 2014. The game went into open beta. At this time, I was 10 and just got a PS4 for my birthday. So I launched the game and played it because it was free. I had no idea what it was or what I was doing, but at the end of the day, I had fun. A year later, on January 24th, 2015, I got the game. Me and my dad used to play in the starting area called the Cosmodrome. None of us knew what to do, why we were doing it, or where to go. We just ran around shooting things, and it was fun. We both ran Titans and went around causing havoc. Eventually, my dad stopped playing because he had to work. So, I went to YouTube to figure out what to do. I followed a guide, and made a whole new character as a warlock, and eventually beat the game. After beating the main story, there was something called the Dark Below. At the time, I had no idea what it was. I was only 11. Then, May came around, and another DLC got released, called House of Wolves. At this time, I took a break from Destiny to play other games like Call of Duty, Minecraft, Uncharted, and Sly Cooper. Eventually, I got back onto Destiny and did the Vogue raid. At the time, I didn't know what the raid was. I just remember being really confused and being told to go here, shoot this, and do that. Eventually, we beat it. Me and five other random people from the internet. I just remember us all being really happy that it was finally over because it took like three hours. So fast forward to September 6th, 2017. I remember being super hyped to play Destiny 2 because I really enjoyed the first one. Times may be dark, but we are Earth's greatest hope. Look around you. A gathering of noble guardians new and old. Okay, listen up. Um, you're a bunch of dirty misfits, but you're all that's left so you'll have to do. Our home was attacked. I was there and fought against the endless onslaught. They kept coming, so I kept firing. Not gonna lie, I was magnificent. Despite the sacrifice of many brave guardians, we lost everything. The tower, the city, our home. So, everything is gone. Your stuff, my stuff, most importantly, my stuff. Today we know our enemy. His name is Gary, or Gil, Glenn? Is it? I don't know. It's something with a G! Go! I know you look to me in times of peril, but this is not my battle alone. Which means if I don't see you out there, I'll kill you myself. It is time to avenge this injustice, for that is the duty of all Guardians. Worst case scenario, you die. But who knows? Maybe you won't. So I ask you, who will stand with me? Yeah! Oh, really, guys? That, that was inspiring. Also, there will be a ton of loot! Yeah! Uh, yeah, right? That's what I thought. Wow, that kid guy seems pretty cool. I sure hope nothing bad happens to him. Then, December 2017 came around, and there was the Curse of Osiris DLC. And in May 2018, the Warmind DLC came out. Now, I didn't originally intend to get these, but after they dropped the Forsaken in September 2018, and watching the trailer, seeing my favorite character, Cade 6 die, I knew I had to. A lonesome star So, after telling my cousin to get the game, and to get the two prior DLCs, just for us to get stuck playing Curse of Osiris because we had no idea what to do, uh, we never actually finished or played Forsaken. Skip to November 2020. After a lackluster DLC Shadowkeep, they dropped Beyond Light. For the first time ever, we're getting a Darkness subclass. This changes absolutely everything. So I got the DLC, and then they released the 30th anniversary event. So I get my friend George to start playing. 
and I eventually delete my warlock character that I've made since the beginning of the game so we could both start from the beginning. So after some time doing some raids grinding to the power cap, he quits right before the Witch Queen DLC. He said the game was too grindy and that he didn't have time to play anymore, which is completely understandable. Makes sense. So back to playing solo, fast forward to the current time, Lightfall is just released. And here we are, giving my review on Beyond Light. I've seen terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. My future does not begin here, but yours does. It's time to step beyond the light. And it all begins with a splinter. Just an FYI, if you want the full story of what actually happens, I'm going to leave a link in the description. Watch that video. It explains everything better than I can. But if you're going to stay and watch this, this is just my retelling of what happens. We get a distress signal from Varix and we ask our ghost, where does it come from? He says it comes from Europa, right where we are. So we decide to go check it out. I've tracked Varix's distress signal beyond the ridge. We'd better hurry. So Varix traded the prison of elders for this? I guess if I played a part in the murder of Cade Six, I'd hide on a desolate moon myself. Those fallen patrols are right where we're going. The campsite. They must be after Varix too. Let's hurry. Thank you. 
Someone's been staying here. There's traces of darkness energy. It's Braytech from Eventide, Clonus Bray's Golden Age colony here on Europa. Whoever was here was using it to track barracks too. They must have intercepted the distress signal before we did. Barracks must have really done it this time. If we don't get to him first, someone else will. If it's not already too late. Wait. Darkness. It's close. I feel it, but it's different somehow. but a thief. Now, where is it? Safe from you, yes. Search the buildings. Find it. Wait! Aramis, old friend. These powers, they create chaos. They are changing you. This. <laughs> Cling to your machine god with this power. We make our own fate. Always playing pretend, living in the past. I should have seen it. Barrack should be just up ahead. There. That's where Varric's signal is coming from. Wait a second, I'm picking up more chatter on the Fallen's comms. Have them surround the perimeter. The snake does not leave here alive. It will be done, Eremiskel. Savior, hurry! You must free me. Varix thanks you. And now, 
must hide. Not so fast. We heard your message. Darkness walks among us. What do you mean? There is no time. They are coming. Varix asks for your protection once more. I will take shelter inside, succeed, and Varix will reveal all. That's the last of them. Success, Savior. Varix is truly grateful. Then prove it. We expect answers. Come to Varix and you will have them. But know that our work here has only just begun. You do not trust Varix, yes? But leave your distrust, your blame, for later. The Elixni who attacked me, she is Aramis, ship stealer. A new Kel of Kells, unifier of the houses. And she seeks to build an army of Elixni, powered by darkness. If she is not stopped, she will destroy us all. You must go. Varix will help you find your way. So after freeing Varix, he tells us about Aramis, the new Kel of the Fallen, or the Elixni as they call themselves. Through communing with Pyramid, she's managed to harness the power of darkness and use it as a weapon. Varix escaped with proof of that dark power, asking for help. If Aramis succeeds in giving this power to all of her Elixni followers, nothing, not even the Guardians, will be able to defeat her. Varix asks you to find Aramis immediately. Perhaps she can still be stopped. Varix, the power Aramis used to trap you, was that... Darkness? Yes. We call it stasis. Power in opposition to your light given by the pyramid. It led Aramis astray. Europa was to be a haven for Elixni, but Stasis corrupted her. With it, she turns obsession into opportunity, working in haste to empower Elixni with the dark gift. Here come the Vex with a conflux. We need to get in there, or pretty soon Europa will be swarming with them. This is what remains of Eventide. Clovis Bray's Europan colony. Built to house those who came to build Exo. And to become them. Until we arrived. Much has Aramis uncovered. All has proven beyond dangerous. Then we'll just have to take it away from her. That dome, is that where you live? A pinnacle of hope for the remaining elixir, but a standing reminder of Aramis's betrayal of Varix.
I feel it again. The energy I felt earlier. It must have been Aramis using stasis. The darkness trail Aramis left behind leads right through that door. But it's locked. With stasis, yes. You will not be able to break through. Then we'll find another way around. Chains! For centuries we have been bound by them. Servants to the so-called Great Machine. We even built idols in its image. We have become pawns of our own devices. No longer. Today, we begin breaking free from our chains. This power is a gift, one I will share with all of you in time. Phylax! One by one, we will rise again. our ship. Let's go. Don't stop. Keep moving. They actually have darkness. The Fallen. This is really bad. Ships here. To the left. Barracks believed Aramis wished to create a new life for the Elixni, but these dark powers have poisoned her mind. And so I fled from her. For this, she calls me Betrayer. There are others who fled, those like me, who still worship the great machine. They are in hiding. I will not leave them behind. They will be casualties in her war without our help. But perhaps they can be brought to safety. So after telling Varix exactly what happened, Varix is alarmed to hear about Aramis's lieutenants using stasis. The situation is more dire than he realized. He wants to remain on Europa in order to help the other Elixni who wish to flee Aramis, and asked us to help set up a comms network using a nearby array. That way he can communicate with his allies and prepare for evacuation. Europa is no longer the haven I hoped it would be. For those who do not wish to live under the rule of a dark kelm, 
We must play savior. A secret communications network would allow us to reach out. Barracks, we're ready. Where is the first relay? Barracks, thanks you. Power's going, Barracks. Good. Two more. Okay, Barracks. That's two. Did you hear that? Sounded like voices. What? Who? The ones who spoke through me. We must hurry, then. There's one more relay. Oh no, it's them. They're here. They're beckoning us. We beckoned. You answered. We've kept you waiting long enough. Come to us. Salvation awaits. The light believes you thankless. Nothing more than a soldier asked again and again to do its bidding. So we want to thank you with a gift to help you finally take control. explanation for all this. I once asked Guardians to destroy the Blackheart, to prevent Darkness's arrival. Success may have been achieved, but I now know that fate comes knocking sooner or later. The floodgates are open. The Darkness is here. I wield it now with intent to stop our enemies where the light cannot. Your resilience within the Pyramid proves you're capable of wielding it too. Before us lies what we call a ziggurat. Its purpose is temptation. To begin your training, you must give in. The Exo Stranger has returned, just as the darkness was inviting you in. Instead of warning you to turn back, she says it's time to accept what it offers. The light is not enough to face Aramis and her dark council. If you want to defeat them, you must embrace the power of darkness as they have.
As this video is longer than I initially intended, I'll be breaking this up into two parts. So we'll continue where we left off in part two.